Time to go viral. Wasn't that your commercial? Didn't yeah, you that's it? my commercial. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, you listen right. to you, doofus. Thank you, see. Yesterday, LeBron doofus, didn't fired up some NBA 2K to get a preview of oh. playing with his new teammate, Anthony Davis and Boogie Cousins. He's got a lot to learn. There are eight new Lakers currently on the roster. See. So this is not real video. Well, it's real video of them playing a video game. Do, do you, do you, do you, do you listen to the words you're, you're saying the words. But this, that is a video game. The video we saw was a video game. Yes, which okay. is the words you spoke that they were playing a video game. No, I understand, but I didn't I know don't it was think file that. video or it's so real. The, the, okay. It's so. Did you CG's see, by the way, th thank you, the, the, uh. We've had this debate, who's the best player in the league, right? I said that theoretically the guy who wins the title gets the title, and then right. I rescinded that title. Yeah. You think I'm being a hypocrite? You saw what NBA 2K did. No, tell me. They have it as a tie between my guy and your guy. Oh, come on, man. LeBron and Kawhi. All ties go to the Ta younger guy. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Well, I thought I just, ties went to the veteran. I just made it up. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like making up Denny rules. Green taught me that. <laughs> Yesterday. Time for stories to start your morning. Tiger Woods is set to tee off at the Open Championship this morning. He hasn't won the event since 2006. See, what are you looking for in round one from Tiger? Well, the course is playing easy this morning. There's some guys out there shooting four or five under. The leader, Webb Simpson, right now, five under in round number one. Tiger Woods, not traditionally a fast starter. Roy McIlroy, triple bogey the first hole. Tiger Woods better get off to a fast start. He better shoot three or four under today. If not, there's too many good golfers. There's too much chasing. But I wouldn't be surprised if Tiger's in contention. Well, so the, that first hole, particularly our golf expert on the staff, Dave Ermacher, pointed out only hole in championship golf where there's out of bounds on both sides. Yes. You've talked about how nervous Tiger gets at the first hole mm -hmm. of every major he plays. Yeah, avoid Rory's quad on the first. He got a snowman on the first hole. And he, Tiger himself triple bogeyed the opening hole of the U.S. Open last year. Try to be Make the turn at even par is what I'm hoping for. Oh, I like that. But the golf expert on the show happens to be me. Until oh, okay. Dave can beat me in golf, all right, don't be referencing him as the golf expert. Okay. Me, I do the grass and the golf commentary. Got it. Sticking to the bread. It's Chris Carter, no problem. I heard Dave could beat you, but he's been tanking for his career. That's just what I heard. Mm. Wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to some football. The Falcons signed linebacker Deion Jones to a four-year, $57 million extension yesterday. Another Atlanta player not named Julio Jones to get paid. See, should Julio's contract be the Falcons' top priority? No, Julio's fine. Arthur Blank and him have an understanding. That came last year when Julio held out. They're not going to have Matty Ryan go out there without Julio Jones. Outside of Matt Ryan, Arthur Blank personally told me and their coach, Julio Jones, most important in the or important player in the organization. He works hard. They got zero problems with him. He's from the South. The fans love him. He's the best receiver in the game of football. No, that, that's, that's assurance. They signed the defensive tackle. Brady Jarrett. Brady Jarrett, two days ago. They signed Deion Jones yesterday. You can believe the Brinks truck. Arthur Blank ain't running out of money. Right. So that's what I was going to say is that Julio... He threatened a bit last year with three years left on his deal. He's now got two years left on his deal. Everyone else has been taken care of. Mm -hmm. Everyone else has been paid. I would imagine during this season, he gets a contract extension. Yes. So not with two years left, but with a year and mm -hmm. a half left on his deal. Right. Aaron Rodgers, didn't they, didn't they rewrite his contract? Absolutely. And now, this is different than Ezekiel Elliott, Jenna. He's already proven himself. He's the best at his position and longevity. It's time for him to get a new deal. And the market's passed him by. Yes, sir. Right now, he's wildly point, underpaid. Man. All right, 37-year-old Jason Witten came out of retirement to rejoin the Cowboys him. this offseason. And Tony Romo isn't worried about the 11-time Pro Bowler saying, quote, he'll pick up right where he left off. That's the problem. See, where is that? What do you expect from Witten? Oh, season? Tony Romo. Oh, man. I'm going to tell you, the worst thing about doing TV when you first retire, you got these buddies Body out there stuff, playing, yeah. and you know they just as old as you, and you try to fix it. You try to say little things to help them out. Now, is this the Jason Witten with hair or Jason Witten without hair? Because he Tony played with mm -hmm. both of them. Yep. Right. But 
No. They, I was trying to get Dallas to be a speed team. You add Cobb to the offense, um, Gabriel to the offense, Amari Cooper, and then they bring Witten oh, back. Button this hook. will oh, slow down things again. Yeah. So, nice job, Tony. Listen, Jason Witten should help them in one area. I will give him credit for this. What have I harped on? They were so bad inside the five yards. Red zone, yes. And, you know, inside the 10, inside mm -hmm. the five. He should help them there. And he can be reliable for Dak if they decide to pass on third and short. He can still get you three yards. Cloud of dust. And so, so I'll give him credit for that. Woody Hayes. Woody Hayes, absolutely. But right, I mean, let's end here with Aaron Rodgers before we throw it too far under the bus. The Packers quarterback gets to work with a new head coach this season in Matt LaFleur. But the two appeared to be out of step with each other earlier this offseason when LaFleur said he plans on limiting Aaron Rodgers at the line of scrimmage. Rodgers, though, seemingly unfazed by the audible issue, saying yesterday, with me, I will do things that other quarterbacks just can't do or just haven't done. See, what was your reaction to what Aaron Rodgers had to say? Well, I, I just need a little more on that, Aaron. Does that mean if the coach calls something, you'll do what most quarterbacks won't do? You'll change the play, even though the coach told you Different. not to change the play. To me, that's what I kind of read into it. Aaron Rodgers is a special, special talent. And as you go through the week, the coaching staff tries to do everything they can, especially for the quarterback, to make them comfortable. So you'll go through the week, and you might run a certain number of plays. And if the quarterback doesn't like that play, that play won't make it to Friday, and it definitely won't make it to Sunday. So by Friday, the offense coordinator, the coach, they can sit down with the quarterback and be like, you know something? How do you like these three throws? And the quarterback right then can be like, you know something? I don't like two of them. So if they're, they're into making the quarterback comfortable. But the audible system is the best way to make a, a, a quarterback comfortable because if he sees something on the field, he knows he's got something in his arsenal in the playbook that he can go to compared to running that play against a defense that he doesn't like and then going over to the sideline for the coach to make the adjustment. The best teams are able to adjust in real time. And that's why the audible, it can be a problem. Defenses change too much. They change it on the snap of the ball. They change it five seconds before. So right at the snap of the ball, the, the offense, we might not know what they're doing. So the quarterback's inability to be able to get out of bad plays. Coaches teach the players on offense, you're going to have five bad plays during the course of the game. I might have a free runner in the backfield. Can the blitz pick up? Can the running back get there and chip him? Can the quarterback maybe throw the ball away? Now, if I got five bad plays, I got an audible system, maybe I can count that down to two. Right. Because I put in three audibles, and we... We, we gash the defense because what defenses don't like is for them to do something specific and then us to have an answer immediately because defenses, if they're successful, they repeat that defense. So the Ottoman system to Brett, I mean, to, to um, Rodgers is important just as it was to Brett Favre. And to me, I was there the day he took over from Brett Favre. The first day he practiced with all the chaos and everything, and you knew then, not only his arm was special, but he has a special football mind, and I believe they should open up everything to Aaron Rodgers. So, but, th but this is where, though, it has to be a two-way street to a degree, because part of what went wrong in Green Bay over the last few years is Rodgers clearly, rightly or wrongly, lost some faith in the head coach. So early on especially, I would argue, even though Aaron Rodgers can diagnose things at the line of scrimmage as well as anybody in the league, and what he is seeing at the line of scrimmage is more informed than what LaFleur is seeing from the sideline or what anyone's seeing from the box because of his experience and just because of his perspective on the play and from being in it, the feel of the game, hearing the sounds, Absolutely. all of that. But he still, he can't, I would, I believe, he cannot assume that he knows all the answers and that he can't mm -hmm. just discount what LaFleur is trying to do if for no other reason than you need LaFleur as well. We always talk about confidence as a player. What about the confidence as a first time head coach? What about the confidence of a guy who was not didn't have great results in Tennessee last year, but people believe he's a great offensive mind. Yes. He's come there with the best talent in the league at the quarterback position mm -hmm. of them finding a way to best work together. Like, if Rodgers is instantly, regularly. We have in the world, they still run with a jockey. 
They still put a saddle on them. They still put a bridle in their mouth because athletes are just like horses. They need a guide. They need a road map. And every once in a while, an athlete needs the coach to be able to go to the whip, to be able to get down the home stretch. So those things, talent is important, but instruction, correction, and faith in what he's hearing in his ear is the absolute best plan. So there's a buy-in. Yes, from Aaron Rodgers' standpoint, he's got to buy in. One of the problems I see, though, first couple weeks of the season, because a lot of announcers, when they watch NFL games, anytime the quarterback changes his voice inflection, they swear up and down he's changing the play. And it's not. A lot of those are dummy numbers. A lot of those... <laughs> There's a reason why they call them dummy numbers. Right, to trick the, to make the defense think you're changing or... or Dennis ahead. Green used to tell us this story. Hey, when I give you dummy numbers and one guy raised his hand and said, Coach, what are those? He said, they're only for the dummies. All right? They're not real. All right? So don't listen to them. So watch when they call game. Watch how many times they try to s insist. Aaron Rodgers is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. I believe that they'll be in sync. I believe we'll see the best of Aaron Rodgers. When did we see the best of Aaron Rodgers last five years? Two-minute situations when they're down. Yep. All right? When he was forced and he was doing most of the odd ones. So Aaron does have a point as far as his ability, what he sees at the line of scrimmage. All right, let's get back to some basketball now. Talk some Kawhi Leonard. After winning his second finals MVP, the